Hello and welcome to the lab. This is a message from Future Zen. I just got finished doing the uh, working on the 70, 70, the 7D15. Given that this is the first one of these that I have actually worked on and I have and I have seen, the repair went well. No problems there. The calibration on this was shaky. Um, it did not go as smoothly as they usually do, and this one decided to put up a big fight and an argument. So, just letting you guys know, giving you a heads up and a warning, if that's not something you guys want to view, maybe skip this one. Uh, there will be more content coming. If that is something you guys want to see, I have been asked by the patrons and people in the comments to post everything that I record, not just the good stuff, but sometimes the stuff that argues with me. So, this one was an argument, and uh, but as requested, I will put it up anyway, and I will see everybody in the comments. Today on the bench, sent in by a viewer of the channel, we have a 7D15. Um, the only information I have on this unit is it may or may not work. Um, the individual who sent this to me said they're unable to get anything on the uh, get anything out of it, and he doesn't know if it's pilot error or if the unit's broken or what. Uh, I've never worked on a 7D15 before. Uh, it turns one of the it adds a frequency counter to a 7000 series scope, uh, typically a four bay, not a three bay, because uh, it needs to go in a B slot, I believe, but I am very unfamiliar with this, but by the end of the video, I'll know how to make this thing work. Haven't even looked inside of this yet. I'd imagine it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of stuff packed into a small space, so let's take a look. Just pull the covers off, see if there's anything obvious, and then we'll fire it up. Ovenized crystal here. Uh, looks like a 5 megahertz. Got some finger switches. These will probably need to be cleaned. Some custom tech ICs. Hopefully those don't have problems. Uh, let's see. Lots of ICs in this one. And some of the sockets look like they might be TI sockets, but some of them aren't. Also, we have a lot of ICs that are soldered to the board. There's a ton of transistors up here. Probably for driving lamps and such. Uh, more IC forest on the other side. I'd imagine this is probably power supply and cleanup. So, to get started, before I do anything else with this unit, it's got a cam switch. So, I'm going to service up that cam switch, give it a good cleaning, and uh, service all the controls, put a little bit of oil uh, for the mechanicals. So everything's turning nice, and then we will uh, fire it up and see if we can get anything out of it. So let me take care of the cam switches, and then we'll toss it into the 7904. Well, here's a case of why visual inspection is very important. I don't think anybody's going to see it from this far away, but as I was cleaning the, uh, servicing the contacts and the switches and all that good stuff, get a pointer. I noticed something. I'll zoom in on it. It's in this area right here. So let me zoom in and I'll show you guys what I saw. Well, I don't know if it is the problem, but it is a problem. Right here, this is disconnected. This should be connected to this resistor right here. Um, so this line is completely broken off and I'll have to reattach that. Now that comes in from the scope um, into a trigger view and trigger output. So I don't know if it goes into this connector and then branches out into the device in different places and things like that. But this this feed comes directly from, from the frame of the scope. It actually goes to the... It comes out of this connector port in the back. So I have a sneaking suspicion that's going to be pretty important. But at this point, let me uh, let me warm the soldering irons and stuff up. I haven't even looked at a schematic for this yet, so everything that I'm saying might not be 100% accurate. Um, just kind of logically going through the plug-in 
So let me get that reconnected, and then let's see what we've got. Okay, I've got the uh, 7015 in the, in the unit, and looks like we are having some... I found one more crack solder joint. I'll show everybody where that was. However, we have some signs of life, but we're not counting. So... At the moment, this could be anywhere. Uh, crystal could not be running, could, might not be running. Gate might not be firing correctly. Counters might be bad. This could still be a problem anywhere in this unit. So let me, uh, let me pull out some schematics and see if I can't figure out some test points. Uh, we are going to need the uh, extender card to bring it out so we can service the, service the unit. But... We have some mild signs of life. Down the rabbit hole we go. Okay, I have the plug-in propped up with some solder wick, and we're on the extension to bring it out so I can service it. This would be a absolute disaster to service without the um, extension. This particular plug-in has a um, stopwatch mode, which I have it set up for at the moment. And if I turn the stopwatch on, you can see we have some reaction. I'll zoom in on the display. So we see it's trying to count, but it can't get past one. Um, I can stop it, and it'll pause. So we we have some counting going on, but then we don't have, and it just reset. So we're counting, we're counting, we're counting. And it didn't even hold it. So initial thoughts. Um, Given that we're going to dive into the troubleshooting process, obviously, first thing we're going to check is power rails. Um, that's usually step one of troubleshooting, thou shalt check power rails, because if, it, if we don't have the voltages we need, obviously, the unit's going to be out to lunch. If I check the power rails and they're okay, next thing is going to be checking the main oscillator, that it's relatively in spec. If the crystal's off, I can't expect the unit to do anything um, or if the crystal's not running, main oscillator's not running, we'll have a situation similar to the TG501 I fixed in a previous video where the main reference oscillator was out to lunch. Uh, but if we have power supplies and we have main reference, we sh are starting to get... A, uh, the next thing I'm going to check is, is actually the reset. So how the unit resets the count. Because if the reset's not going correctly... It's going to do stupid stuff. So the three things that I need to check right now before we do anything else, because we've cleaned it and the fault still stays, so there is going to be something to fix on this. Um, power supplies, reset, or power supplies, main clock, and reset. If I have those, then we're going to be into ICs, doing a few other things, seeing where the uh, where the circuit leads us or where the faults lead, a, lead us to get it resolved. So... I'm going to let everything warm up here for a little bit. I don't need the high precision. So this is just going to be on the 6510. And we'll go from there. Tech had a awesome idea with the power supply in this unit. There's a way to, to test the unit because circuitry is underneath, underneath the power supply. So there's a way to flip the power supply out of the way and still power up the... Um, plug-in for service. But you do need the extender to do that. If you don't have the extender that it'll interfere with the time base. So let's see what we got, and we'll go from there. Well, I pushed on the board a little in doing some troubleshooting, and it's come good. So we know what that means. Cracked solder joint, loose ground, something board problems. Very interesting. So let's see if we can't make it fail again. Failure's good in this case, lets me figure it out. But I was pushing around the um, U266, so if I have to, we'll just pull the boards out, we'll reflow a bunch of solder joints, and hopefully that'll fix the problem. I'll also take a look at them under a microscope, see if I can't see any cracks. But, um, weird. Well, I can make it do it. Uh, if I push on the middle of the board, we have bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good. So there is definitely a cracked solder joint. Just to show you guys what I'm doing, zoom out. All I'm doing is right in about the middle of the board. 
counting. I'll turn this up so you guys can see it. Counting, not counting, counting, not counting, counting, not counting. So it's flexing. So I'm definitely going to reflow some solder joints. I think we have a cracked solder joint, and that's why this thing won't count. Uh, getting this thing apart is going to be fun, but uh, we will do that together. And um, just for grins, we'll use nitrogen because we can. Okay, to get into this unit, it's four plugs here, 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 and here. I've taken pictures of this unit. I'll be posting those on Patreon as normal. Uh, one, two, three, five, five bolts. They stay in, and then it's just a simple lift off. Let's see what we have underneath. Oh. Oh, those screws are captive, and they go into studs. That's actually kind of cool. I like the way that's done. And they're spring-loaded, too. Wow. This was between the boards. There's a lot of rust and a few things over here, so I'm going to have to refresh a lot of these solder joints. I'm sure that's not helping our problems any. Um, I have to be careful with all these pins because I don't want to bend any of those because those have to go back into mating sockets on the other side, on the other board. Got some more pins over here, so it'd be interesting to work on. But uh, yeah, I'm going to clean this area up for sure. From a quick glance, everything looks okay, but not great. Can't be perfect for as old as it is. So let's see what's on the bottom of the other board. Nah, this one actually looks a lot better. So this board looks a lot healthier on the bottom than the other one does, so I don't know exactly what caused that. Maybe some liquid got spilled in it or something, I don't know, but over time, but uh, we'll get that cleaned up. This doesn't look half bad, so um, definitely since I got the boards off, we're going to replace these sockets and uh, check for loose solder joints. Um, these pins, these through pins from Tektronix, these are notorious for cracking solder joints. So I would not be surprised if our problem is in here or on one of these other pins. So I'm definitely going to retouch all of those. Um, as a matter of fact, this one doesn't look too good. Just in the camera. But we'll be hitting those, and we'll see if that makes our intermittent go away. So I got a little bit of work to do, so I'm going to get to it, and uh, it's not going to be anything interesting. It's just going to be running the iron for a while, so I will skip all of that, and then I'll be back. Well, we have our first major delicate problem. I'm going to have to straighten this pin. I uh, pulled this chip out. This pin was mashed into the socket, so that's not healthy, so I'm going to have to fix that. These are not the TI sockets. They're um, they're different. But now that I got the chips out, I'll just touch up the solder joints on these because these aren't TI. These aren't the TIs, and then we'll see if the sockets are still good. I may not need them, and then we'll reassemble and see what works. Okay, I've got all the joints touched up. I focused on a lot of the pins, which are really hard to see because the pins up here where my finger is goes all the way down to the board. A lot of those look dry. There's quite a few of those interfaces. Um, like on this back row, all of these pins, I re-soldered, reflowed the solder on all of those. There's pins up, uh, up here, back there, they're everywhere. So I'm going to throw this back together and let's see if we have a repair. And there we go. It is counting. So everything is working pretty good. I have it set to it's 1 kilohertz now. We'll change it to 10 kilohertz. Yeah, there we go. So Perfect. All right. Well, that's looking better. So um, I have it hooked up to one of my free-running function generators. The clock there is not stable, so the fact that this is off doesn't mean anything for the um, 7D15. However, it does need a calibration. 
So I will have to read the service manual, see what we have to do to calibrate that. I have something coming to the lab. It was supposed to be delivered on Thursday. It won't be here till sometime next week. That's going to really help when I have to do frequency calibrations. There will be a separate video on that. Uh, it's what we're adding to the lab when I take over 800 subscribers. I'm going to wait for that to come in, and uh, then we will do a calibration on this. So I've got some work to do in the meantime, but it uh, looks like a uh, cold solder joint and a uh, bent pin on an IC was the problem on this one. So I'm going to let this burn in, just let it sit here and run for a while, make sure it doesn't have any other problems, make sure it doesn't let off the magic smoke, and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm set up to do the calibration on the 7D15. We're going to do some check-in and make sure this thing is working after everything we've done to it. So, uh, where can I grab? Eh, we'll leave that that way for now. So what we need to do is from right here, I need to check the trigger point. And I'm using the DMM7510. And I should get a reading from plus half a volt to minus half a volt when I turn this knob completely. So we're at plus 550, 559. And we're at minus 557. So that's actually, very that's actually centered very well. And it is calibrated so I will I have to do the exact same thing to the B channel but when I do that to the B channel I'll move you guys over to the DMM 7510 since we're doing a calibration we'll use the high accuracy uh, I'm pretty uh, 6500 would be fine for this calibration no no need to go to seven and a half digits we have it so that's why we're using it and we are good on channel B uh, I should note that is full sweep, not to detent, though. Detent causes it to change modes. Okay, I had to change those to preset. That's all the way in the detent, which would also be counterclockwise fully. Okay, we have a 10X probe hooked up on test point 41, which is right here. And now we need a 3 megahertz sine wave. We have a 10X attenuator as well as a 50 ohm BNC terminator. And let me see if I can get some signal. Well, that's all the way up. Let's see here. So I'm not getting any signal. Oh, this needs to come way down. Channel one, I also need to AC couple this. There we go. So now, let's see if we get a... Acquire mode is normal. There we go. Wow, that is one dirty signal. All right, let's see if I can't clean this up a bit. Well, I didn't uh, have much luck with trigger A, but I have found out in the service manual that in some units there is a wire missing. Uh, so I had to do it on trigger B. However, these are the aberrations they're talking about, and they want these roughly centered on the waveform. So... I'm not 100% sure how they got the waveform they got. That looks like it's just for um, illustration. But they want these equal distant from the peaks. So that's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. 
So, we are good there. We had to move over to the uh, PG-506 to get just a square wave. Uh, nothing special about the square wave. It's just a one kilohertz square wave. Adjusting for a flat top, but that looks like a pretty good square wave to me. So, we are good there. Now let's check channel A. Oh, channel A isn't going to work because of the wire missing. So we come over here to channel A, hit channel A, and we still get our square corner as it averages out. This signal is very noisy because of the lab. I have a lot of stuff running right now, but so I have averaging on on the scope. Man, this thing is not happy, but I am getting attenuation there, so... What we'll do now is pop off an attenuator. We'll go to 1x. And we have square wave. Perfect. There we go, square wave. And we'll check 10 volts. Of course, that's running through the B attenuator. This not having the channel 1 working is really confusing. All right, so pull this out. We'll go to B. Check the attenuators for B. Need to remember just to do B and not A. So here's our two attenuators. Require average normal. That's all the way down. Wow, there's a lot of noise on here. Here we go. That's about the best I'm going to do with all this noise. Holy crap, there's some noise. Pop this out. Pull that out. Kick this up. Yeah, okay. Our attenuators are working just fine. Pull this out. Kick this up. And there we go. Cool. Okay, taking a look at the pulses out of the pulse generator. That looks pretty good. On the 10 volt range, we'll dial it back. Lots of noise. That looks nice and square. Have to put an attenuator in. Let's see here, dial up the pulse. So the compensation looks okay as well. I'm used to scope compensations, which are cleaner than this. This one's, it's working, uh, like the plug-in's working, but as you guys can see, it's very, um, uh, it's very noisy. Okay, I went through the rest of the procedure. There's no adjustments. There's just checks. Everything checked out okay. Um, let's see here. My next test point is going to try to do this on camera right here. And I need to check for a phase lock voltage of 261 is very close. I'm looking for 2.6 plus minus 0.4 volts. I'm at 2.61, so perfect. Do not need to mess with the phase lock voltage, so that is fine. I argued with all that noise, and I think I just found out where it came from. I have this plug-in set to 5 millivolts per division, and it was AC coupled. I bet you a lot of that noise was coming from this plug-in. Let me just check that on the scope. Look at that, clean sine wave. How much you want to bet I have a clean square wave, too? No more noise. Look at that. Now to prove it, put a 10x attenuator in and let's go to point 0.1. Let's see how it's doing. <laughs> I 
Well, that's cleaned up quite a bit. That looks better. Hmm. Need to knock the attenuation down a little bit more. So signal's still running a little hot, but I have it turned way down. Yeah, it's still a little noisy, but not as bad. Yeah, wasn't that plug-in, but everything's even looks better now than it was. All right, I need 10 nanosecond markers, and we want to check the period accuracy. And there we go. We are within the accuracy of 0.1%. 10 nanoseconds, 0.1%, so we are good there. 0.1% would be one full count. We're at 0.96, so we're off by 0 0.04. So we are good. Okay, here we go. We're we're hitting on 100 megahertz right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kick this to 225 megahertz. So we're going to crank this up. Actually, we're just going to... Crank this up to 225, and we're going to hit, and there we go. So the sensitivity is right. We're triggering on 225 megahertz, right at about a half a division of display. There was two steps in there that I had to skip because I do not actually have a 10, a, a measured 10 nanosecond delay line in the lab. That is something I will work on. However, to the limits that I can test it, this 7D15 appears to be working. I also don't have any of the SMB connectors, um, so I couldn't test those as well. But it is up and going. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this 7D15 plug-in. This, uh, this one gave me some trouble. I will freely admit that um, this did not want to go this did not this this wanted to argue and this one this one gave me a lot of uh, a lot of trouble but we got through it and at least to the limits where I can test it and check it in it's ready to go so it's going to turbocharge my um, 7704 that I use at work so I'm gonna uh, take this with me and throw it in there and that'll give me a frequency counter over there as always, I will see everybody in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.